The fabric of the universe screamed. It was a sound beyond sound, a vibration that tore at my very soul. Every fiber of my being felt like it might unravel, joining the chorus of unraveling reality. Beside me were my companions. Our best efforts were flickers of defiance against a darkness that devoured worlds. We stood within the heart of the void, the final stand against the nameless entity tearing at the foundations of existence. The air sizzled, not with heat, but with the wrongness of it all. No sky or ground here, just churning, impossible colors, like the universe itself bleeding into nothingness. Then came the surge, a darkness deeper than the void itself. My soul, seasoned by collections, recoiled. Even bound in service, the raw power of a demon lord was a force to reckon with. Asmodeus, soul broker, my master. He tore through the fraying reality like a shark through water. His form was a monstrous mockery of majesty, not grand horns and cloven hooves, but a towering figure clad in midnight armor with the faintest hint of scales. His eyes were twin pits of swirling emptiness, sucking in what little starlight had bled into this dying realm. When he spoke, it wasn't mere words, but ripples of force that stilled the tearing chaos. So, here you are. At last. His voice scraped through me, an avalanche wrapped in velvet. The entity that outwitted itself broke our pact. Thought you could swallow the stars and pay no price? You are in debt, bound by old laws. Service, or your essence, those were the terms. The battle, if it could be called that, was beyond anything I'd witnessed. The entity lashed out with whips of starlight, and Asmodeus moved like a shadow given substance, blurring into mist before reforming a heartbeat later. Chains, not metal, but pure midnight, whipped out, binding sections of the entity that howled and evaporated against its touch. We watched. Yet a familiar unease settled over me. Asmodeus's dominion was unchallenged. So why was he here? It wasn't like him to intervene personally unless... My mind raced. Was this about the entity breaking its pact? Or was I caught in a power play far beyond my understanding? Asmodeus stood victorious, a final shard of the entity pulsating weakly within his fist. He regarded it with the disgust a lord might show a worm. Then he turned towards me. A bolt of dread shot through me, colder than the void's breath. He knew my thoughts, as always. There was no hiding any unease or doubt beneath the chains of his contract. A diligent collector of souls, he rumbled. You carry the scent of the crossroads. My mouth worked uselessly. Was I being reprimanded, or was this something more? There is always a cost, mortal, Asmodeus continued, for defiance, for power, for simply existing. Your choice is ahead not behind. And then, with an echoing whisper echoing through the disintegrating void, he was gone. The entity's soul vanished with him. The cosmic battleground faded. With the entity's demise, threads of reality struggled to reassert themselves. One moment a desolate void. The next... We were dumped back into the mortal realm with a nauseating lurch. My companions groaned and blinked as if waking from a nightmare, but I felt no such relief. The echo of Asmodeus's words clung like a shroud. The place where we'd emerged crackled with misaligned energy, the air tinged with the burnt sugar stink of dimensional distortion. Reality would patch itself over eventually, but the scars of what had happened here would linger. Just another mark on the world I was sworn to protect. A protection that felt woefully inadequate. Questions churned within me, but my companions were already looking to me, their expressions a mix of confusion and desperate hope. It was habit now. Eli, the soul collector. Eli, bound to the infernal. They saw me as their anchor in these turbulent times. I had to push my doubts aside. It's over, I said projecting more confidence than I felt. For now, the danger has passed. 
Murmurs of relief rippled through the group. My duties as a collector came sharply back into focus. The celestial battles might be world-ending, but it was the aftermath that touched the lives of mortals. The destabilized energies, the lingering shades torn from their intended paths, those were mine to deal with. With a familiar, bone-deep weariness, I started the well-rehearsed incantations, soothing, binding, coaxing the frayed threads of reality back into place. As the energy calmed, I released the souls in my custody. Some soared away like doves released, others drifted with uncertainty, but several lingered, drawn to the residue of the conflict. These were the dangerous ones, fractured and clinging to the mortal coil with renewed hunger. I sighed. Another collection for Asmodeus. One I had neither caused nor wanted, yet here it was. His dominion fed on such imbalances. A fact my burdened conscience would never fully reconcile with. The collection was grueling, but at least familiar. It was when the work was done that the world's weight settled fully on my shoulders. Asmodeus's presence lingered. Not physically, but in the choices that now lay before me. His words echoed in my mind. Your choice is ahead, not behind. He'd offered me something after the fight. It wasn't spelled out, more a nudge, an invitation to reconsider my own path, perhaps with more power, but undoubtedly with more consequence as well. Was it a promotion within his infernal hierarchy? A different contract, with different burdens? I didn't know, and the not knowing frayed my nerves. The temptation was there, a flicker of greater control, a chance to push back harder against the tides of chaos. For a moment, it warred with another far quieter desire, that of a clean break, to step away from crossroads deals and demonic packs, to find a place in the world where I wasn't merely holding the worst of it at bay, but perhaps healing it. I glanced at my weary companions. Some would understand, others less so. Over time, I'd earned their trust, even their affection. Abandoning this role now would seem a betrayal, yet staying true to it might betray something deeper within myself. The choice wasn't immediate. Asmodeus was a creature of schemes, of long games. But I knew a reckoning was coming. As I walked away from the fading battlefield, I wasn't heading home or into the next crisis. I was walking towards a crossroads of my own, and the price to be paid, whatever path I chose, would undoubtedly be steep. To reach Asmodeus, one did not call. One willed it, and the infernal realm twisted to accommodate. I found myself not in a throne room of fire and brimstone, but a vast hall of records, a testament to his true dominion. Every scroll, Every parchment whispering with names and contracts represented a soul bound and bartered. A chilling reminder that power, for Asmodeus, was currency. He stood before a towering bookshelf, his form deceptively quiet compared to his presence that echoed through the world-ending battle against the entity. He didn't turn, yet I knew he was fully aware of my presence. You linger longer than expected. His voice was a rumble like distant thunder that promised a storm. Have you reached a decision, Collector? My mouth was dry. The choice, my lord, is not simple. Asmodeus finally turned, and there was a peculiar sort of amusement in those empty eyes. Ah, but it is. Choice is never about ease. It is about the will to pay the price, whichever path you choose. A familiar wave of power washed over me. It wasn't a threat, but a demonstration. I felt the touch of the entity's fragments he'd absorbed, raw cosmic energy pulsating beneath my skin. He could imbue me with this, elevate me to a strength I'd barely imagined. I cannot deny, I began, voice shaking slightly despite my attempts, that power is tempting. Of course, as Modus purred, it solves problems. It enforces order, it protects all admirable virtues when wielded correctly. And if I choose not to accept your, uh, generosity? The words felt like ash on my tongue. He smiled, and it held not warmth, 
but a hunter's satisfaction. Then you retain your current contract, your current burdens, life and death, the balance of souls. You are efficient in your role. My hands clenched. This was the crux of it. Not the lure of power, but the weight of responsibility. Was doing enough, truly enough, when I felt myself faltering at every step? Your offer, I gritted out. It stands regardless of my choice today. A curious mind, Asmodeus noted. Indeed, my game's along, my plan's beyond the grasp of mere mortals. There will always be potential for those loyal and capable. He gestured, and with a ripple of infernal energy, a scroll materialized in his hand. Should this remain your path? He extended it towards me. Then your contract is renewed. With this, the strength you tasted becomes yours, a tool for your tasks. I took the scroll, familiar binding, but with a weight that made it nearly buckle my knees. Asmodeus had not lied. Power coursed through it, potent, intoxicating. And if I walk away? The words tasted of both fear and desperate hope. Asmodeus tilted his head, a bird of prey considering an unusual morsel. The realms are wide, the paths of mortals, unpredictable. You would be forfeiting much, protection, purpose, power. A pause. But the choice is always, ultimately, yours. The hall of contracts seemed to hum. Around me, countless souls were bound, their fates woven by entities like Asmodeus. Was it truly possible to step aside, to live a life where deals were not the currency, and my every step wasn't measured against an unspoken contract? Decision crystallized. I met Asmodeus's gaze. Then I choose to walk away. A ripple passed through him. Not surprise, but something like acknowledgement. A bold choice, and a costly one. Perhaps. I held the scroll aloft, a flicker of defiance entering me, but some prices are too dear to pay. The scroll dissolved into mist. The raw power faded, leaving behind only the echo of what could have been. Asmodeus remained silent, a monolithic observer. I didn't wait for dismissal. With a nod that was more for myself than him, I turned, and the infernal realm warped to return me to the mortal one. It felt colder, harsher, but with a tang of potential I hadn't known before. My work wasn't done. Souls yet drifted, realities yet needed tending. The world changed, and so had I. My path was my own now, the prices to be paid measured by a new scale. It was a daunting beginning, and Asmodeus's shadow lingered. But that first task awaited, and for the first time in a long, long time, I smiled.